All right, crew. So all of my helpers are gone right now to their uh, cousin's house to hang out for a little while. But the end of the month is coming soon, a delivery day. So I've got to get this fence built or those uh, little piggies aren't going to have a place to call home. So I'm out here working on this by myself today. When well, that's okay. I'm used to that. But <clears throat> I got to get this fence stretched out and handling that roll, 330 foot roll of uh, four by four wire is going to be pretty tough. So I'm going to take a few little shortcuts to make it easier for myself. This first, <clears throat> this first area is going to be difficult though because of that tree and that tree. Normally I would like to just roll it out on this side of my T-post and then just fold it up. That way I can attach it to the, the T-post and, and uh, use the U-nails at the ends on the 4x4 to hold it. But I can't do that, so I'm going to have to unroll it on this side of the T-post, underneath the arc down there. Um, and then I'm going to have to pull it back through the T-post, stretch it out, and nail it to the nail it off and hook it off to the T-post. So I'm going to take this piece of uh, EMT conduit here. This is the exact pipe that I drove in the back corner when I was uh, marking off for my where I want to put the corners, the 4x4s for the corners. Once I got the corner set, I pulled it out. And now I'm going to reuse it. I'm going to stake it, lay this wire flat, stake it through there so that it holds it down so that I can roll it that way, get my distance marked off, roll out flat, cut off, and then I'm going to have to pull it all back, pull it through the T-posts, so that I can uh, get this side fixed up. And that's just so that it doesn't unroll behind me as I roll it out. So I'm cutting this a little bit longer than I need it to be for this side because I want to be able to stretch this in order to get a hold it, get something in there to, be able to pull it with. I got to have a little bit extra on this end. So it's about maybe 12 inches or two foot longer than I need it to be. So I'll go ahead and cut it off. That way I can pull it back, pull it through the T-post on the right, the right side before I attach it. I know some of you are asking, but in my opinion, the most important tool in a man's tool chest is comfortable shoes. When I cut my wire off, naturally it wanted to coil back up and it rolled back up, which I think is to my advantage because I'll be able to compress that down back to a smaller manageable uh, amount so I can put it on the other side of the T-post. As you guys can see, I got my wire all the way to my post where I want to nail it to this post right here. But I don't see any way that I'm going to, by myself, be able to stretch the wire and nail it up. So I had to come up with something on Wreck It Ron style. So I enlisted the help of an old dirty friend. We all have one of those, right? Boom, this guy. And at 19 and a half horses, it's just marginally less than 
Miss Mandy's slow mo minivan. But we're gonna see if we can use him to help stretch this wire out. And using this same piece of conduit, I interlace this conduit in these in between these squares to kind of evenly distribute the uh, the tension so it's not just on one piece of wire it'll be on the on the piece of conduit pulling the whole thing tight hopefully I need to trim some edges ratchet strap. Right, so that worked out pretty well uh, it took a little bit of finagling but it did work out pretty well I did have to put a, a strap from across the t-post just show you guys across the t-post because the top wanted to lay over to the right hand side so in order to get it pulled up upright I put this little strap on here just to keep it upright now what I want to do is go back through on every t-post to kick the wire out away from it a little bit just to make sure that it's not hanging up on the teeth that are on the front hand, front side of the T-post before I come back through with my clamps and clamp it to the T-post to keep it stood up straight. But all in all, pretty successful. I'm happy with it. It's pretty tight. One side done. Just got to put the straps on it and move on to the next one. Now we're going to put these uh, T-post clamps, T-post clips on here. And the best way that I've found to do these, starting low, connect to one side, go across. See there, uh, the hooks go in opposite directions. Oh, I'll off a bit. I'm sure they make a tool for this. There we go. Get over there. Grab. Twist. And that's secure. Now you can push them down where the wire catches on the teeth on the back side of the T-post. And I'll probably put four per pole on here. Especially on the lower lower portions of it any kind of animals pushing on it they can't push it out where they can get out and one side is complete well almost complete I got all of my t-post uh, clips on there I've got to cut this little excess off the end that I left on there to be able to pull with staples are in this looks pretty good it's not incredibly tight but whenever Miss Mandy suggests that we get a herd of buffalo I'm going to object I don't think that it would hold a herd of buffalo but anything that we're going to be any livestock that we're going to have it's plenty strong enough for so three more sides to go Ladies and gentlemen, it finally happened. I made a mistake. More specifically, Pastor Ron made a mistake because when I measured these poles, 
to set them in the ground, I measured them for a 10 foot gate, thinking that I would have to add inches on the end of it for the hardware that comes, that comes with the gate. But in fact, the gate is nine foot eight inches long with the additional hardware making up a 10 foot opening. My opening is 10 foot four. So as you can see, I've got a big gap on this side and I've got to figure out a way to close this gap in so that this gate fits and that the little dog can't fit through here. So you got to figure out a way, unwreck it Ron style. The solution is to add these two treated 2x4s two to make the opening a little bit wider and close in that gap. Everything will still work out fine. I'll put my hardware through this into that 4x4 four four. and then when I trim out the front with my wood uh, to make it a nice little privacy fence, it'll cover all of this up. Okay, so I got that side of the front fence done. I'm gonna finish out this side. I wanna show you guys what I was doing. So I got this combination of pallet wood. This is an old uh, outdoor deck that was torn down and I cut it up. Some one by fours off of a pallet and then some old barn wood. And I'm just alternating uh, wide, narrow, medium. But in between these two, I'm using the level, not only to keep all the spacing e even, but also so that I make sure all my boards are level. I got this side to finish, then I'll be done.
and there it is. Fence is almost complete. Looks really good. I like I know these are some of these are not treated lumber and they're not going to last forever, but that's part of the fun of it is being able to replace those. Um, I've only got one screw in the top and one screw in the bottom and the two by fours behind them are treated, so those are not going to rot. I am missing a few T clips on a couple of these T posts over here that hold the wire on it. And right there, that post right there, there's supposed to be a gate, right? 10 foot gate between the two of those, but gates are hard to come by right now. So I'll have to wait until the Farmers Association gets some more in because I want them to match. I do like the wire on the gate like this because that means I don't have to put some other kind of wire or something on there and it will keep my chickens and pigs and hopefully keep that little predator out but nothing keeps him out of cannot keep him out of anywhere he did, he wants to go is that right rough guilty anyways guys we had a we had a contractor come out and give us a price to build his fence is roughly half an acre this fence and it was of course, he did uh, quote it as being a privacy fence, six foot privacy fence. And it was $12,000, a little over $12,000. And I built this one out of, out of uh, field wire and T posts. And I've got probably $1,100 in it total. Could have done it a little bit cheaper, but I did want to use treated lumber on the ground. This in contact with the ground. And, uh, $1,100 and probably two days worth of work total. And it turned out really nice. If you guys like it, click the like button, subscribe, comment. Until next time, do something cool. So my brother-in-law, Joel, was helping me out on this project that we built this fence. And we're out there on the, stretching the wire out. And he goes, Ron, this is only a four foot fence. I could jump higher than a four foot fence. I said, of course you can, silly. Fences can't jump. <laughs>